Welcome back to Horse Racing Nation. Ed DeRosa with you at HRN HQ in Louisville. And joining me from Louisiana, home of the fairgrounds where the Derby action is this weekend, it's the champ, the million dollar winner, Michael Baychock, uh, where we met about 10 years ago. Michael, very fortunate to uh, have developed a friendship with you and always love handicapping with you. And what better way to kick off 2023 than the Derby kickoff at the fairgrounds? It's great to be here, Ed. And we did meet, although you were disguised behind a palm tree, I think, taking a video <laughs> of the uh, <laughs> of the winning moment. Uh, that was I back when it was sort of taboo to video everything. Right. That's why you're, it's like the the man on the grassy knoll, but it was the man at the, the palm tree at the Treasure Island, uh, which it was, a, you know, now an infamous. Well, it's a video that I watch all the time. So thank you. Thank yeah. you for taking it because it captured just, you know, an incredible moment uh, well, for me and, and, and for horse players. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to, to be there and really the essence of, of making a big score and Six figure score is is a big hurdle for some. Uh, I've never eclipsed it. Even Steve Christ, a big pick six player, had never had one. You got to the seven figure level, so uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of joy that's brought you through the year. And like you said, you still watch it. I still watch it, and I was just behind a palm tree. You got to live it. <laughs> Probably no seven figure score available on wagering on the Lecompte, but. It is the anchor of a pick five that should have a pretty big pool and the fairgrounds off to a slow start handle wise. But, you know, for a lot of people, I think this is sort of the the ramp up for them into the spring and hopefully the handle will respond. And uh, it's a pick five sequence, mostly stakes, but it does start off with a maiden special weight. And I know you're no stranger to handicapping, whether it's maiden claimers or maiden specials, uh, plenty of these offerings at fairgrounds. So you're used to it. And I think there's some opportunity here, right here in the first leg. Yeah, you know, I mean, as you know, or you, because we're friends, I love maidens to bet on them, and I love maidens uh, claimers even more. But um, especially as a contest player, I just right. I feel like uh, you get some value with low ownership in contests of maidens, especially first-time starters. So I think it just increases their you know, their contest value. But for this race, I mean, this is a really nice um, maiden, and there's a bunch of really nice maidens on the card. Uh, I'll start with, you know, the first-time starter, uh, Kawhi okay. Dan. Um, Zach, Kawhi Katie, who was just a tremendous filly. She won her first three starts. And, you know, I like to look at first-time starters to see how their mom mamas did. And this one, you know, would rank up there as like the best that you could do. She won her first three starts, two graded races. Um, it's just a little curious that she comes out running in a longer race. So, uh, and Steve asked me, he said, not exactly known for his prowess with getting horses ready to go a distance on their first start. But I thought it was interesting that she has some tremendous breeding. Um, another horse that I, you know, kind of keeping my eye on and also will be in my pick fives is mobster um who ran against uh banishing who runs earlier in a card who is i think you know a legitimate kentucky derby uh horse uh, especially if he wins tomorrow um, and this horse really put in a nice run around the turn and then just just basically got outrun but you know first time around two turns was luis saez road comes back to rise again Definitely this horse is going to take a little bit of beating um, in, in this race. And a horse that I will include probably, <clears throat> to use your terminology, as an A. <laughs> but the one that I'm really interested in as a, as a, you know, a value play and kind of a, you know, um, going against the crowd in these pick fives, which I think is necessary, is Absolutely. the bottom horse, Silver Bull. Um, oh. This horse had a little buzz going in, into his first race. although you know. Greg Foley is not known for winning first no. out at all. Uh, so, you know, and the horse was kind of cold on the board, 16 to 1. But it's since come back and worked well. Um, I, uh, Brian Hernandez stays on board. I'm just going to – I mean, I know this horse is going to improve uh, going around two turns. So this is going to be the horse that I'll, you know, if I – that I'll include as an A. If I do any singles, I'll, I'll single Silver Bull. But I'm probably just going to be, I think I'll just be, you know, two or three deep. There's a, there's another horse on the rail I'll probably use in 
a deeper ticket. <clears throat> Onasa, only because. That's my yeah, and I, I have no, no knocks other than I, you know. Well, I think the price will be right, um, but um, no, no buts. This horse will go to the lead, and that's exactly where you want to be uh, at the fairgrounds, going around two turns um, on the rail. Uh, he's tried two turns once before, but he faded. But he was in post twelve, which at Turfway, right. I don't I'm think is that. optimal. <laughs> so, um, this will be a horse that I'll definitely include as an A. So you know, I'll probably have three A's: Onasa, Mobster, and Silver Bull. So the first are not an A for you. I, I agree with your trepidation no. on the, the route to kick things off. Yeah, I mean, just not an A. I think it makes sense for this horse probably to have started in a sprint. Um, but I, I don't really know what to make of it. So uh, I'm assuming the price might be a little short. Uh, Kawhi Katie's not known for, you know, she's got four starters, but only one winner. Um, mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, it doesn't say precociousness coming out of the gate. So I'm willing to let that one beat me in the big five. Uh, with the, and the only other thing I'll add on Onasa, because you mentioned the uh, wanting to be on the lead, obviously with the rail, probably not going to play too many games out of the gate, want to go get position. But uh, that sprint on debut, uh, the Brisnet pace ratings, uh, clearly the fastest of this group. Now we'll have to get the eight and a half. That was a sprint uh, on debut there for that one and it ended up not getting the job done. But with that post relief, the rail uh, just adds up for me to, to take a shot at the morning line price. So um, with you on Onassa and then Mobster, I expect will be the favorite in here. And I was just like, well, I don't really necessarily want a super short price to, to kick things off, but I'll watch the tote. If they're going to let Mobster go at three to one, I think that's fair, but any less, I'm less interested. Yeah, that was, a, I mean, it could be, a key race that he just ran in. Right. Uh, I actually had a horse that ran in there, own, a fractional ownership horse that ran really, really well, ran, just got to be uh, ahead for second. Um, so I was interested in the race, but I think the horse that won the race, Banishing, is a really, really nice horse. Agreed. And uh, as you said, we'll get to see earlier on the card. Later on the card, closing out this pick five, closing out the, uh, what is it, 14 race uh, extravaganza is the LeCompte. And uh, I don't necessarily love the favorite here either. Uh, certainly instant coffee, five to two on the morning line. I get the price. Uh, I understand why he will take money, but I think some of the alternatives are just as good at better prices. Uh, and another one who's sort of not quite the post relief is Onasa, uh, but confidence game uh, caught my eye a, a bit. Uh, this one has had some wide trips and this is its three-year-old debut, but plenty of eight and a half furlong races already. Keith DeSormo put plenty of bottom into this one. And we saw him spring the upset against a very good one last year in this very race. It seems like Keith likes to point him early. I mean, Keith, I think, has, you know, experience winning. I think he won the LeCompte with a long shot a few years ago. Yeah, the like Midnight a, Horse. Extreme long shot. So he definitely, has, as, 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 the, the, as the distances get longer, Keith DeSormo's horses usually get better, and this one is, was no exception. Uh, <laughs> he definitely had a really nice race in his last, and he has a little bit of speed. Out of, I mean, speed, I don't think you know he needs to go to the front, but I think as the Brisnet um, um, stats show, you know, you, you really have to be close to the lead to, to be in contention at these, at these you know, two-turn distances, especially the mile, but a mile and a 16th, absolutely. Absolutely, as well. So, you know, that's how I kind of start the hands. Like, okay, who's going to go to the front? Because that's just, that gives right. you such an advantage. And to me, it's clear, I think, that the one being on the rail and having abundant speed is going to have to go to the front. I don't think the speed is of quality. So I'm not, I'm not really mm -hmm. thinking that this horse is going to go all the way. But I mean, Tyler Gaffleyan is going to be told, take it, take this horse to the lead. And see what happens and right i just don't think he's he's gonna last so although i, I do know that the other horse that i think well, i was projecting to go to the lead itsos is now i'm being told scratched mm -hmm. so this may that may upgrade my echo again just a little bit because right. a loose horse on the lead at the fairgrounds is really hard to run down so the other horse that you know and i don't know whether this one's going to run either because i think this tap it's conquest 
is cross-centered into another race, the race I think that Banishing is in. Okay. But it, this one looks like more rateable. Um, and that was kind of the horse that I was looking to, to be the first horse to inherit the lead or take the lead from um, Echo again. But the horse that I really like here is the three Bromley. Um, oh. Come, I just, I mean, I, you know, I like, I looked at the her his first two races and they were just, they just seemed like this horse had more to give, uh, maybe better than looked, you know. And I think this one for sure is going to have enough speed to get in contention, but is also, you know, not, not a, not a horse that has to have the front because he came from behind in both races and just, right. you know, was relaxed. And I think at a price, that's, that's my, that's my pick. I mean, that'll be my pick on my chalk's choices. Um, the other horse um, that, you know, obviously I think has to be used in a pick five and I'll use as an A is instant coffee. Clearly, you know, winning a grade two at Churchill uh, is, 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 is deserving of favoritism. I'm not sure that Cox, you know, is really interested in winning this race, but the horse just may be too good, you know, to, to not, to, to deny the win. The thing about Brad Cox, if you go back and you look on these big race days, you know, um, golly, he just seems to win a lot of the races on those days oh, yeah. because he does such a great job with the scheduling and being getting his horses to peak on the right days. Um, he's just, he's really probably the best at that right now. And so when the money's on the line, his horses run, this is a logical spot. Horse has been off, you know, since November. Um, logical step, but I'm not sure that this horse is probably fully cranked, and he and he does come from behind, way behind. So that kind of puts him in a little bit of a disadvantage. So I want somebody that's more closer to the pace, which is why I went to uh, to Bromley here. Yeah, instant coffee uh, has the the look to me, especially you mentioned that scratch, which won't help his chances. But uh, maybe one of those were saying, "Oh, wait till the risen star." Uh, second off the layoff and, you know, maybe with the distance and, and more pace. Yeah. I don't want a super short price with him. I, one thing I think is really intriguing about him though, is I would say he, in my mind, doesn't really fit the prototypical Brad, uh, you know, his horses, not necessarily on need the lead types, but even elusive quality and uh, Mandaloon were always right there, you know, making first run if they could an instant coffee much further back and is uh, delivered on, you know, the talent so far. So eager to see what he does moving forward, but kind of feel like you do is maybe this isn't quite the time we're going to see the best of him. Uh, I already mentioned confidence game. You mentioned echo again at six to one. I'm thinking, man, how can you not play this horse? But with the scratches and it's Steve and Tyler, I don't really think that price has any chance of happening. No, I think with the scratch, you know, as you mentioned, with Steve Asmussen on the rail, fairgrounds betters are savvy. You know, this is probably a seven to two, three to one, maybe. Uh, but you know, Cox has another horse that tap its connection, so that right. might be the one. The, the other, the old angle, the other Cox. You know, that that's probably the one to 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 be to be looking at, and that horse would be a nice price. And a reminder on Echo, again, it's not in the running lines, but he actually was part of a no contest at Churchill Downs, I believe the Street Sense. Uh, no, because he was in the Iroquois. So whatever the race is that kicks off the November meet. Uh, but he looked like invincible that day. And it was like, oh, this is the reason he was three to five on debut. Uh, and it ended up being a no contest. It was a race he absolutely would have won. Uh, so to your point, if he can get alone and brave on the lead, it, it'll be tough to catch even in that long fairground stretch. But that's always a, a big question mark, especially going eight and a half furlongs uh, for the second time. His first time didn't go very well. So very price dependent for me what I end up doing within the race. But I am going to use him in my pick five. Yeah, same. Uh, so that's the the bookends. We start with the maiden. We end with the grade three LeCompte. Any plays uh, in the middle, Michael? Um, I think I liked. Let's see. I'm checking my notes here. Uh, yeah, in the eleventh, in the same in the same pick five sequence, I'm probably going to single a horse. Uh, that's the five and a half Duncan Kenner on the turf. 
and just yeah. for um, listeners <clears throat> and and viewers, the turf at the fairgrounds has had some issues. Uh, they've been running with the rails 34 feet out, which uh, has really favored horses that come from behind and horses that are not on the inside part of the course. Uh, I don't see the designation in the Brisnet, but um, I, I don't suppose that there's any chance that they take the rails down because the other part of the course is really in bad, bad shape. Yeah. That being said, you know, I'm always looking for a horse that's going to come from behind and not get somehow, you know, stuck on the rail, even if they're a come from behind horse. And that points me to uh, the four, Evan Singh, who has really one running style when he, he's going sh short, and that's to come from pretty far out of it. I don't think that he's going to get stuck on the rail because there's some horses on the inside that have running style. So I think he'll be wide, which I know this is counterintuitive, but that's where you want to be. Like you want to be really wide on this course and off of layoffs, this horse has run his best races. So he's coming off a layoff. Um, I think he has some quality and, and he's trained by Al Stahl, who's kind of going through a bit of a cold spell, but I really like Evan Singh. That's going to be a horse that I'll, I'll definitely single on some of my pick by two. All right. Yeah. Six to one on the morning line. Colby uh, back aboard after some other jocks rode uh, in the summer and fall. And uh, one of uh, it's that time of year, it's the seasonal debut for most. Uh, I haven't seen many run already in 2023. Uh, this one, a, a little bit of a layoff, but Al Stahl, 19% on uh, this layoff range. And you mentioned he's maybe cold a little recently, but with that stat, it is a positive ROI for him. So confidence with Al when he, he gets him ready off the uh, sort of typical layoff at this time of year. Good uh, good signs there for, the, uh, for Evan Singh. That's number four in race 11. Michael, really appreciate you joining us and tell everyone where they can get all of your chalks choices for not just the big day at fairgrounds, but every day, I believe. Every day uh, available for, for good or bad in, uh, in the new, in the printed version of the advocate Baton Rouge, the times picky in new Orleans online at sometimes, if you have a subscription all the time, NOLA.com, the advocate.com. Um, so those are, and I'm, on Twitter, I usually post them, so you can catch me at Baychuck Racing. But every day, I uh, make the picks, and you know we're having a bit of a struggle so far this year. Uh, <laughs> shorter fields, shorter prices, but we'll we'll heat up, and um, I just hope they run more turf races. Yeah, well, I know that's the plan for sure. And Horse Racing Nation, a proud sponsor of the uh, graded stake turf races coming up on Risen Star and Louisiana Derby Day. So we're certainly excited for uh, maybe a few more turf opportunities on the way there. And uh, I'm glad you met mentioned Baton Rouge because I had a memory come up the other day. You touted me on a breakfast place, and to this day, the uh, I believe it was a crab Benedict, uh, and it's one of the best breakfast dishes I ever had. So, uh, for all your uh, food and Epicurean needs, uh, Chalk's choices uh, go to the table as well. <laughs> well, I do. I do like to eat, as you can tell, and uh, I do like to eat good food. So that that was Louis Cafe, and it's that was it. one of yep. the best breakfast one of the best breakfast places I've ever uh, eaten at. I'm glad you yeah. enjoyed it. Um, Delicious. So, we'll have to uh, go out uh, trying a few new spots. If you get down in New Orleans, there's places opening up all the time. Yeah, no, uh, let's let's count on that. I'll be down for Risen Star, so hopefully, uh, if not then, Louisiana Derby Week. But uh, more importantly, short term, let's uh, cash this pick five on Saturday. Let's do it. Thanks for having right. me on, Ed. Appreciate it. My pleasure. That's the champ. After this, he's going to the Ron Flatter Racing Podcast, the RFRP. So I'm sure I'll have some other thoughts on the 14 race card that's Saturday at the fairgrounds. Good luck, everybody.